Pompeo statement is a monument to cowardice and to authoritarian aspirations. Donald Trump lost this election. The world knows that. As your uh, correspondent pointed out, it wasn't even that close. By the way, the popular vote, not that that matters for the actual constitutional process, but it matters for understanding the mood of the country, is only going to grow more in Biden's favor. Mike Pompeo is trying to become complicit in stealing this election. There is no other way to describe that. I want to point out that the, uh, his, his uh, office and he himself has tweeted in recent weeks, recent months, um, you know, sending out messages to other countries in the middle of their elections talking about democracy. Uh, what do you make of that double standard and other Republicans who are unwilling to move forward? Um, how important is this transition period? Well, with regards to your first question, to be you know, disappointingly frank here, it is deep in the American political DNA that the rules simply do not apply to us. So people like Pompeo and even people, Democrats in the Senate, who you know, think there should be a transition, may not see the hypocrisy there. The hypocrisy there is astounding, right? The president twice has, from the White House, charged baselessly that Joe Biden is stealing this election. This is the kind of thing we would expect to see from a, a third-tier authoritarian leader, not from the president of the Democratic country. As far as what the Republicans are doing in the Senate, there's a couple of things going on there. One, they have, since Trump got elected, again, just demonstrated extraordinary cowardice. They are terrified of Donald Trump. Donald Trump has made them all co-conspirators, and they're afraid of the truth coming out. Now, I, I don't think that at the end of the day, Trump's going to succeed here. But what the Republicans are doing, beginning with Mitch McConnell, is laying a marker down and saying, we are not going to let the Biden administration accomplish anything. What they want to do, and you'll hear this on the domestic messaging, is tell a story that, look, you Democrats, you investigated Donald Trump. You didn't believe in the legitimacy of his election. This is the same thing. This is, you know, tit for tat. Now, that is, of course, absurd because the Democrats, despite real concerns over Russia's role in our elections, concerns that a recent re report by the Senate that was overseen by Republican senators verified Donald Trump became president. Joe Biden did nothing untoward here. In fact, he overcame foreign intervention and he overcame Republican efforts at voter suppression to win a resounding victory. But nonetheless, that's where the Republicans in the Senate are going with this. And the Biden administration should be aware of that. These Republican senators are not going to be in the mood to work with Biden on anything with regards to a legislative agenda. So is this a preview then of what we could see in the next four years? Sadly, it probably is. The caveat is that a number of senators are up for re-election, Republican senators in 2022, notably in the states of Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, North Carolina, but there are others. So typically a president comes in, they bring their party into control of both houses of Congress, and they lose seats in the midterm. This time, at least with regards to the Senate, we could see the reverse because the map looks so bad for the Republicans going to 2022. There is a real chance that Mitch McConnell overplays his hand here. Additionally, we have two runoffs in the state of Georgia, and those elections, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But one thing to think about, that election, by the way, is going to be January 5th for both those seats. We could be in a very different political place. And if the Republicans are seen as the ones with the frivolous lawsuits and they're trying to create an alternate universe, and Joe Biden continues to do what he's been doing really well since he won this thing, hitting on this message of we need to come together, let's move forward, I'm the president of all Americans, that could be a message that helps the Democrats in those Georgia races. So Mitch McConnell hasn't wrapped up leadership of the Senate quite yet. But almost half of Americans did vote for the other party, vote for Donald Trump. You mentioned Joe Biden is calling for unity. Um, but what does the election and the days after reveal about America right now? Is it more divided than ever? It's certainly as divided than ever. I don't know that we're more divided now than we were a week or two ago. One thing we should begin to look at is, you know, we know 71 million, that's a rough number, 71 million people in America voted for Donald Trump, more than who voted for Donald Trump last time by a considerable amount. There's a very high turnout election. What we don't know is do all 71 million of those people believe the lies that Donald Trump is telling right now. And my sense is that a good chunk, not, not half, but maybe a third or a quarter, are beginning to move away and accept reality. We have a long tradition in this country. And let me tell you, I used to work in politics. I've been involved in a lot of winning races and a lot of losing races. And when you lose an election, you have to get up the next day and say, we'll get them next time. And that ethos is also deeply, both people on, on all sides of the aisle feel that. So my hope is that some people of the 71 million will choose to live in reality rather than a Donald Trump-constructed madhouse and understand that Joe Biden won this election fair and square.
All right, we'll leave it there. Lincoln Mitchell in New York. Thank